Happy Wednesday. We have some wisdom, I hope. If you had told me last March that seven months later, approaching the end of October, we'd still be in pretty much the middle of the pandemic with no real end in sight. Well, if you had told me that back in March, I think I would have lost my, let's just say I would have lost my stuff. But in a strange way, I've gotten used to this. I've gotten used to the masks. I've gotten used to staying several feet away from people whenever possible. I've gotten used to washing my hands a lot. I wonder though, that as I've gotten used to those things, is that a good thing? Or I think about that story about the frog and the pot of water on the stove and the, the heat goes up gradually and the frog adjusts, right? And eventually it kills the frog because although he would have jumped out of a pot of boiling water, by the time the water starts to boil, that frog is used to it. So I wonder if I've gradually become accustomed to something that might kill me, but I have to live you have to live. I mean, you can go several months without going to a baseball game. You can probably go several months without going to a movie or a concert, but you can't go six, seven months without buying groceries or getting gas for your car, taking a walk, doing yard work, paying rent, whatever it is that you have to do, you have to do it, right? You have to live. That's the only option that's available to you and to me, to all of us. And that goes not only for our physical lives, but for our spiritual lives too. I have a confession to make. I've told many people, it's not a secret, that when this first started back in March, I could not pray to save my life. I was just too distracted. I, I could stare off into space, but that was about all I could do. I was too agitated by this weird Hollywood disaster movie that we all seem to be living in. But I've adjusted, like that frog, right? And this week, the church has given us something that I think gives us some hope. The readings at the masses, the weekday masses this week, the first reading each day is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Now, Ephesians is a letter that experts tell us probably was not actually written by Paul. And they also say that because they don't mention in the letter, you know, people's names and locations like in some of the other letters, that it may not have been directed solely to the church at Ephesus. It may have been a more general thing, but I'm not really interested in the scholarly aspects about who wrote it or who it was written for. What I am more interested in is the connections that it endorses between the people who would have read and listened to the letter, because the church in those days was suffering oppression from the outside and confusion on the inside. The more things change, the more they stay the same, huh? Now, last Monday, in the first reading that we had from this letter during weekday mass, St. Paul, or whoever wrote it, says, by grace you have been saved through faith. And the letter goes on to say that we are his handiwork. His meaning God's. We meaning all of us without exception. Then on Tuesday, the letter to the Ephesians talked about the church, and let me read this to you. It's one of the more famous passages in the letters attributed to St. Paul. It says, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. In other words, like the different parts of the church building, we members of God's church remain connected even when we're physically distant. We are connected to one another, to those who came before and to God. Now, today's reading from Ephesians emphasizes those connections even further. It says that in Christ, there's no real difference between Jews and Gentiles. Perhaps today we might rephrase that to say there's no significant difference between Democrats and Republicans or between traditional Latin mass Catholics and post-Vatican II Catholics. We are connected. We face the same risks from the same virus. We face the same decisions about how to stay safe, about how to keep living, about how to keep praying, about how to remain sane in the midst of this seemingly never-ending pandemic. 
reading ahead, that letter will continue to emphasize connections to each other and to Christ at Masses for the rest of this week. Now, after social distancing for seven months, I personally am grateful to be reminded that I'm somehow still connected to others. In fact, some of our connections are becoming that much more visible, really, to me. I mean, the virus has made me realize at all times that if I'm not careful, if I decide to leave my mask at home or to get closer to someone than I really should, I could place myself in danger. But more than that, much more, I could put others in danger. My behavior and the decisions I make could affect not only me, they also could affect my wife or my kids or my 82-year-old mom. They could affect the checker at the grocery store or the pharmacist at the drugstore, the server at the restaurant that's bringing carry out to my car because I'm still not ready to eat in a restaurant. Distance and masks aren't about protecting me as much about they're protecting everybody. As it says in the letter to the Ephesians, we all are connected, even when and maybe especially when we feel the most disconnected.